implementation methodology. That's what's made my company grow super fast when I understood how to deliver a project correctly. It's very important. That's what makes the difference between excellent partner and regular partner. As project managers, our job is amazing. We have the opportunity to improve people's lives at work. That's super important. We see a massive improvement on the day-to-day -day activities of people when they use a loop. But implementing management software is as difficult as it is impactful. It's hard. It's very hard to be a good project manager. More than 50% of traditional ERP implementation fail. Why? because it's too complex and it's too expensive. And only 18% of SMEs have deployed an integrated management software because they think the project is too uh, heavy for them. So this constant failure on the market to deliver are actually our opportunity as Odoo partners to thrive. By making implementation projects smooth, predictable, and affordable, we can transform the market. And we start with the main advice about this talk. And probably the number one thing, but stay for the rest of the talk too, it's read the book. We wrote a book about implementation and methodology. You have to read it. Hi, I am Marcelo and I am the interactor with Fabian today. I have read the book two years ago already. Ah, great. But you know, we changed everything. One month ago, we released a new release with new chapters and we fine tuned the process with all the expertise we get from the market. Ah, so it's not this one, it's, it's this one. Ah, I will read it. Yeah, so let's time to do a small quiz. Do you know what's the first chapter of the book? You can't uh, read it. No, don't check. Yeah, it's a uh, key concept. <laughs> um, maybe later on, but we'll start with what is a successful project. And there is an easy answer to that. A successful project is on time and on budget. And I'm insisting on that because a lot of service companies think about satisfaction of the customer. It's very easy to satisfy a customer. Just say yes to everything. Yes. And you should say yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and <laughs> yes to everything. Yes with everything. <laughs> uh, it's very easy, but it's a very short-term approach because if you say yes to every development, custom development the customer is asking for, the project will get delayed, it will cost a lot, and at the end, the, the customer won't be satisfied. And it's very also important to understand who is your customer, because you probably work with key users and key users expect more features. But the people you want to satisfy are the people who are buying the project, the executive committee or the CEO. And those guys want the project to be on time and on budget. So when you have to balance between accepting new features, satisfying the customer, getting on time, on budget, making exceptions, always think about the success of the project in the long term. That's what makes the difference between a great project manager and the average one. They focus on the long-term success of the project rather than the short-term satisfaction of the customer. Yes. All right, we can speak about the key concept now. Okay, that's the first chapter. I mean, yes, second, <laughs> second one. <laughs> uh, and what matters in the key concept is the mindset. If you want to transform your company that implements uh, Odoo, it starts with the mindset of your team. And let's start with the responsibilities. You have to decide what are the responsibilities of the customer and your responsibility as a project leader. Usually a customer man, uh, master the business know-how. They know the business, they know what to do. But they don't know the product and they know how to implement. So what should be done and how it should be developed or set up is your responsibility as a project manager. And I insist on that because I see a lot of project manager when the project fails, when we develop too many uh, unnecessary features, they say, yeah, but the customer asked for it. No, it's your responsibility as project manager to ensure that we do the right things and that we challenge the things that are not necessary. It's also your responsibility to be on time and budget, but I already said that. Second thing, which is very important in the mindset, is to keep things simple. Limit custom development to the minimum necessary. There are plenty of tips and tricks on how you can do that to challenge the customer in the book. Fewer meetings, less paperwork, faster decisions, so reduce the number of people in the meetings. Limit the number of stakeholders. If you have a meeting with 10 people, it's just impossible to uh, uh, challenge the specification and decide on what should be done. You can have 10 people in a meeting, but it's a training. It's not a, um, a business meeting. And also something that is important, I see a lot of services company working full time uh, on customer location. That's good for change management. Being on site is very good for training and change management, meeting people. But it's inefficient to get things done. 
So have a good balance between when you go on site and when you uh, work from your office where you can uh, set up the system when you are close to the expert or the developers that can help you if needed. Third thing that is important, the people. It's, it's project about people. Project manager must be problem solvers as well as product and business expert. That is very important. Never have a project manager that is not an expert in the product. Uh, the main, the best decision you can get come from the fact that you know both the business and the product. If you only do the business, you will do a mess in the product. If you only do the product, you will do a mess in the business. You have to train your project manager so that they get both. And two people doesn't fit the role. You need one person that master both so that he can efficiently balance the pros and the cons of every decision. You must avoid intermediaries who are not decision makers. Sometimes customers subcontract uh, to another company who will do the project management for their side. It's usually a bad thing. Usually you should try to have decision makers who can decide quickly and who know the business so that the project gets faster. Um, a success of the project is strongly related to velocity of the project. The faster it gets, the better it is. If it starts to be slow, people get demotivated, it delays the project, it, it, it's not good. And we have to train the key user early on in the project so that they get committed. And the last thing that matters is project manager. That's the most important role in a project. It's a key success factor. It's more important than the developers or the tester or whatever. Uh, if you have the right project manager, you will have a success in the project. If you could have average developer, it works. But if you have great developers and no good project manager, the project will have difficulties. So it's key to recruit and train the best talent and retain only the best performer. And even the best project leader miss critical details. So it's very important, so even if you have great project manager, to challenge their work at key phases in the project, like in the ROI analysis, so that they get feedback. Because when you are too much in the project, uh, discussing every day with the customer, sometimes you need someone with a different point of view just to challenge uh, your ideas. All right. So we've seen what's the mindset, what are the key things to, for a project. Let's go now on the different phases of a project. So it starts with the uh, pre-sales phase, like ROI analysis, where we decide the budget, the planning. Usually we charge for it, but it's not the real project. And the customer gets a planning, a budget, a phasing, and a specification of everything that should be done in this phase. And then we sign the contract for the implementation, and you have uh, several sprints of implementation. And at the end, there is a go live, and then support and maintenance. And it starts with the phase one, return on investment analysis. It's usually a phase that we charge for a few days. Could be between 5 to 40 days, depending on the size of the project. And I recommend here to use the, all the tools that are available in the book. So in the book, we provide templates for everything. Key users interview, return on investment analysis spreadsheet, closing presentations. There's tools in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah but anything. you have to click on the link. Ah, OK. <laughs> there is no link on the paper, but there is the URL. Um, all right, let's have a look at some of these tools. Uh, that's the uh, uh, templates of interviews. So when you do the interviews with the key users to understand their process, their pain point, you just follow these templates, ask all the questions, fill in the mind map, and you have a good basis uh, for uh, your interview with the key user to analyze their business needs. Um, that's the return on investment analysis spreadsheet. There are a lot of tabs there from return on investment, then you have the savings and the I for the investment. So you see the tabs. Basically, what we do is two things. Returns, so we analyze what will be the impact of a do in the company, what the customer will save because of a do, how we will improve in process because of a do, that's the returns. And then the investment, what they will have to pay to get to that level of implementation of Odoo. So it's uh, the gap analysis, what we call the gap analysis before, a list of specifications, things that are missing in the software, things that you should configure in the software, uh, that's the return, uh, investment. And when you have both together, you have the return investment. And in this document, you have the model for everything. And for pretty much every industry, you have sample of what are the usual returns and the usual issues so that you have a pre-filled document. It's very easy to start with. That's a sample of the uh, return. So we analyze how people spend their time and then what is their efficiency and what can we save if they use Odoo. Uh, let's say you have an inventory with 10 workers and uh, three people or four people who record all the transi transactions of the worker. Obviously, if you deploy barcode scanner, maybe these uh, four people will record transactions in the system. Only one is necessary 
to uh, do the tasks for the worker, but they can scan directly, so you save a lot of time. Um, and you can just write the percentage of what you save there. And we transform that into cost based on the salary of the full-time equivalents. And you have a list of all the process and the pain points that the customer have, uh, the things that we should improve and that Odoo will allow to simplify. That's the return, that what they will win using Odoo. And then you have the investment. It's uh, what uh, it will cost them, a list of features to develop. And both together does the return on investment. All right. So when you have done this analysis, working with key user, you have this spreadsheet that is filled. Uh, so you have a budget, a planning, a phasing, everything is there. You have to present that to the stakeholders of uh, the company. And for that, we have the template of the presentation meeting with uh, all the slides of the things you should show about the structure of the project, the main pain points, how we will solve them, the cost, the issues in the cost, the planning, and so on and so on. So we also provide in the book the link to the uh, PowerPoint that you can use for uh, presenting the return on investment analysis. Some tips and tricks for the re return on investment analysis. I've seen a lot of companies doing gap analysis instead of return on investment analysis. So basically what they are doing, they are do analyzing everything the customer needs and a big spreadsheet with all the items to develop or to set up and with the cost and then you have a cost and a budget. The thing is, at the end, if you only present things that cost and only present missing features that you have in the product to the customer, it's not, it doesn't feel very valuable. I mean, the customer wants something for the money they will invest. So if you forget about the return phase, what they will save by using Odoo, what they will improve as a process by using Odoo, uh, it's not going to be efficient. So we propose that you move to the return on investment analysis instead of gap analysis. That's one of the improvements of the new <laughs> version of the book. Um, uh, it's going to be much easier and you will have a better success rate. All right, so you, one thing that works very well, and once you have done this analysis, with an exp uh, ask an expert that is external to the project to challenge the specification. Sometimes when you work daily with the, with the key user, you forget about some of the things. Being an expert project manager, it's very hard. So having an external point of view, it's always good to challenge the specification. And when you challenge, he has to do two things. Do the split between what's necessary and what's optional and implement in phase one for the go life only what's necessary. Why? Because the, change, the, the need of the customer change after the go life. He probably ha requested a lot of things that actually are not really needed because Odoo is different from what they used to do before. So all the things they have in mind, pain points they add in their old software doesn't matter too much with Odoo. But when you go live, you will also find new specifications that you absolutely need. So it's better to do the minimum required uh, to run the business and do the optional things after the go live. That way you are sure you don't waste money developing things that you don't really need. And so in the book, you have lots of tips and tricks uh, about uh, how to do the ROI analysis. I'll present here my three favorite ones. The first one is to don't offer different options to the customer. Don't tell him we should, we have this problem and I, we have three possibilities. Either we do that or that or that. It's a very bad manage project management approach. You have to choose so that the customer doesn't have to choose. Why? Because the customer doesn't know the product. He doesn't know implementation of such a complex project. So if you don't know, he will have no evilness. So it's your responsibility to propose something and one, and it's the responsibility of the customer to challenge what you propose. So you propose something, you explain the pros and the cons, and it's the role of the customer to challenge. Never ask the customer which one of these three options do you prefer. You choose because you know better. It's also important to decide what's necessary or optional. I've seen some partners sending the big spreadsheet with all the developments to do and asking the customer to fill in the fields, is it necessary and optional? Obviously, when you do that, the key user, they put necessary every, everywhere because they want everything, but that doesn't help the project to be on time and on budget. So you have to do the choice, uh, what's necessary, what's optional, what will be in phase two after the go live, not the client. Of course, the client will challenge that. Sometimes it tells you, no, you did a mistake, this is really necessary, but at least you did the initial setup. And when you do demos and when you train the user, ask uh, the, the key user to do the, the mouse and the, the, the keyboard themselves, they learn better that way. All right, so we did the, uh, the, the analysis. No, it's the kickoff meeting. We, everyone is excited, we start the project. That's when the serious thing starts right after the contract is signed. 
And same thing, we have lots of uh, IDs and tips and tricks and templates in the book. Uh, but my favorite ones are the, the following ones. One, manage customer expectations. It's um, uh, don't, over, don't over promise and under deliver. Do the opposite. Over deliver because you under promise. Uh, tackle issues directly. You, it's, you, you, I know it's very easy. Junior project manager, they'd want to avoid complex uh, confrontation. They try to avoid it. If you are the best project manager, if they find an issue or something that is risky, they address the issue early on. It's always better when it's early on. And of course, align everyone on the methodology. The customer should understand why you think that way, why you act that way, because if you understand it, it's going to be easier to work with so him directly. We just put them in line, like we align them very well like that, and <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's drinkable customers. <laughs> <laughs> and so you did the kickoff, and now you go to the phase three, which is the implementation when the complex thing starts, so you have different phasings and things like that. So I'll let you read the book to check the templates and how we work. But some of the best tips and tricks that I like in the book is that data imports are very costly. So they put the project at risk. And usually, you don't really need them. Uh, I re there is an, a story in the book from Winan that says, had a customer that wanted uh, all his accounting data for the past five years. But the thing is, if you have to do that, it's probably uh, two months of development, and we'll have, we would have consumed all his service pack just to do the data import. So he made a deal with the customer. He told, you, he told him, I think you don't need them. And the customer said, yeah, I really need my data. He said, no, I think you don't really need them. So I, I do a, a deal with you. And the deal was the following. I do your implementation of your accounting software in two weeks without the data. I train you, we do it, the thing. And you use it as it is. In two weeks, it's going to be done instead of two, or two months or three months. And if after that, you still need the data of your history, then I will import the data later on. The customer said yes. They went in production in two weeks, and the customer came, came, called back uh, five months later. And he was super happy. The, the software was very good. And he, he said to Winan, you know what? I did not even need the data uh, only one time. And what I did, it was looking to the old software. I just lost one minute. And because you've challenged me to not import the data, we saved two or three months in the project. So data imports are costly. Just keep that in mind so you can challenge it. Minimize specific development. Uh, I would say that it's very often, like 30% of the case, customer requests specific development that they don't really need. So if you don't challenge them, they will pay for 30% of things they don't need. And because they think in a certain way and you know, do address the same issue in a different way, and there are plenty of reasons for that. And there are a lot of good tips and tricks on how you can challenge or value the specific development in the book. Challenge customer request. I mean, everyone can say yes to a customer. It's very easy but only the best project manager can say no. And then involve the single point of contact of the customer in the project so that he feels committed and ask them to do the business flow. We sometimes have the big presentation to the executive committee. Sometimes it's done by the single point of contact of the customer. And it's, very, it's great when it's that because the involvement is much better and it's rewarding for the team. All right. Um, so now it's time for the go live. So there are plenty of tricks for the go live, obviously. First, a training is not a conference. Make them uh, act, play with the software, have a mouse and a keyboard, and they, they should do the thing themselves instead of just listening to you, training them. Key users are not professional testers. I see a lot of project managers saying, yeah, we have issues after the go live, but it's because the customer did not test it. I mean, you should test everything yourself. You should take the responsibility of being sure that it will work. Obviously, it never works. You always have issues, <laughs> but then you fix them. But you should get the responsibility and not delegate that to the customer. Of course, the customer has to test and do his best, but it's a professional job to be good at testing for a specific environment. So you have to do it uh, deeply. Create the momentum. We see a lot of issues when the, the customer is scary about the go life. So he, he, he's waiting that it's 100% perfect. So he always push back the go life. And that puts the, the project at risk because the longer it is, the, 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 the more the motivation decreases and the risk that the needs of the customer change over the next month. So it's important to create the momentum and go and, and have a go life. You know, the salespeople, they have something like they call with the closing. They negotiate a deal. At some point, they have to close the deal. We sign and we go for it and we have to push the customer to that. Some, some salespeople do that. So whoever, whoever closes it is the key users, right? Yeah. <laughs> In this case, um, 
it's more about you have to close the go life. You have to get a commitment, make sure everyone is happy. Don't oversell them. Tell them they will have issue. It's okay. We'll have issues after the go life and we will fix them. But if we push back, we'll have even more issues. So at some point you have to push him to, okay, we go and we uh, go live and we take the risk because some customer doesn't want to take any risk and then things get very complex. Um, and then we have the post go live. Um, that's uh, where you do support, maintenance and so on. And there is one thing that I really like that we introduced in the book a month ago. So you probably didn't read it <laughs> yet. <laughs> Not yet, but I will. Yeah, uh, it's the progress report. Um, at the end of the project, customer likes to do um, a progress report where you uh, do a summary of uh, everything you did. So you check, you uh, re-explain the timeline of the project, the project status, the people's adoption, and the business achievement that have been done. It's very important to do that because even though you feel like they understand everything you did, sometimes the executive committee or the CEO doesn't know because they were not part of the project. So it's good to uh, re-explain everything that worked, the thing that didn't work, or we will improve the, the collaboration between your two companies in the future. And one thing I really like in the progress report is the digital opportunities. It's the next step. A lot of people just deploy the ERP and that's it. But in, as part of the digitalization of the companies, you can do a lot of things. You can um, transform, make them become paperless, improve the HR, the marketing activity. There are so many things you can do with Adobe. So do uh, digital opportunities, all the features and that you rank that they could de deploy and you rank based on the potential impact and the ease of transformation. And that's where you help the customer decide what's the next step. You can make them dream about other things uh, after you deploy the core business. All right. So I have a, a last tip uh, for you. Read the book. <laughs> Plenty of tips and tricks, templates of documents. There are use cases with quiz. There is a personal assessment tool, so you can uh, compare your level compared to the, the, the project leaders that are working at Odoo because we and the sales methodology. Um, so to assess your experience, we did a survey amongst all our project manager. And uh, on this survey, you get some points based on the answer you, you, you do. And you can compare yourself. Basically, uh, the people having one year experience at Odoo had an average of six points. Between one or two years, they had nine points. Two and three years, they had 17 points. And the ones who had three years experience working in our company as project leader uh, get 20 points. So try the survey. It's in the book. And you can rank yourself uh, compared to the other team. Thank you. And I'm open for the, uh, the questions. So welcome uh, everyone to this uh, Q&A. So I'm Antoine, Business Service Manager Reader at Odoo. I'm responsible for the implementation of uh, Odoo in uh, SMEs. And I'm Fabien. <laughs> so let's go with the questions. So I will start with a question uh, a lot of you ask, where can we get this book? So you can come here to the office to get a paper version. But uh, if you want to be up to date, there is a, the um, electronic version available on the website. We will post it on the, on the chat and on the extended Q&A we will have uh, afterwards. Yes, so we'll, we'll uh, and I go with a question from Sergio. Is there a step-by-step -step guide about the ROI preparation? I believe the templates we have in the Google spreadsheet uh, is kind of a step-by-step -step because there are a lot of samples data of the most common um, issues you find in traditional businesses. So you can rely on the template and the presentation ROI. And we also have three extra presentation on the ROI analysis during Odoo experience. So watch out the agenda. So we are short. I think we will continue. Yeah, we will uh, jump directly in the the extended extended. Q a. So we'll give you a link in the chat. Click on the link and we we'll continue with uh, Antoine and me in the link so we can yeah. have a close discussion in the link you will receive in the, in the chat. And don't hesitate to post all your questions. You already posted here on the chat so we can answer to all of them. So see you in a few seconds. We just move to another we room and we run. meet you in the chat.